Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com. And today I wanna to show that a little bit of color change, even if everything else stays the same, can make a really big deal in your illustrations or potentially in your character designs or really any kind of work you wanna do. And I'm gonna let you guys find this out firsthand in today's assignment, which is gonna to be to try out a variety of different color schemes using the included cybernetic gorilla. That's right, this drawing that I've done here, I've put it at the bottom of the post, so you can download the PSD file and try it out for yourself. So from a practical standpoint, let's take a look at how I set this file up. You notice that each of these individual colors, like the light green color, here I've called armor color number two, each of those are on their own layer. So all of the light green in this illustration is on one layer. Likewise, all of the dark green is on one layer. And you see the little locks next to the layer names on the layer stack? Well, those locks are called lock transparent pixels. So what that means is that if I were to select the light green layer and I wanted to change its color, if I paint with any color, I can't go outside of the lines defined by that layer. So I'm just changing the colors. And this makes changing this image really easy because I can click any of these layers and begin painting and I can change the color. And if you didn't even want to paint, you could simply open up the hue saturation slider or any of the other ways that Photoshop allows you to change all of a layer's color at one time. You also notice that I have a shadow layer and a highlights layer. And with both these turned off, all you see are the flat colors. These layers also have locked pixels, which means you can do the same thing for the shadows. So right now the shadows are sort of cool green, but if I wanted to make them a warmer color, I could select the shadow layer, use the eyedropper tool, pick a warmer color for the shadows, and then begin to fill those, and I'm only adjusting the shadows. So setting up a document this way takes a little bit of extra time up front, but it really allows you to play with different combinations and not worry about staying inside of the lines, which means I get to experiment with trial and error and see which different colors look interesting together. And then once you've come up with a design you like, it might be time to save that for a second on a different document. So you could drag a marquee around it, go to Edit, Copy Merged, and then paste that into your new document. And then I can continue changing the colors in my original document and not have to worry about losing that variation. Now I recognize that this is my drawing and not yours, so it's not going to be your own portfolio piece. But hopefully you'll learn something about the way that moving different colors around your illustration can really just lead to a very different result. And also, from a technical standpoint, you might want to try this method using the locked pixels for changing colors in your own drawings. So have fun with the assignment, and make sure to download the PSD at the bottom of the post. Thanks for coming to Control Paint, guys.